as someone who covers both college and pro football in Miami, this is when my worlds collide. Welcome home, Braxton Berrios. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricane, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet, and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first and second listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. I got so excited when I saw Adam Schefter report today that Braxton Berrios, former New York Jet, was not easy as a Miami Hurricanes fan who loves Braxton Berrios and as a Miami Dolphin fan who despises the New York Jets, was not easy or fun for the last four years watching Berrios in a Jets uniform. Miami Dolphins are signing Braxton, Mr. Honeynut Berrios, on a one-year contract. Hopefully that turns into more than just one year. He's, guys, I'm not exaggerating when I say this, he's one of my favorite Miami Hurricanes players that I've ever had an opportunity to cover such a class act and just such a hardworking guy, both on and off the field, academic, all American, almost won the academic Heisman, whatever they call that award. You know, people remember what the real Heisman is called. Nobody remembers what the academic Heisman is called, unfortunately, uh, but also just a really, really talented slot receiver and a talented return man. So Barrios, it's a former pro bowler folks was a pro bowler two years ago, 2021 with the New York stinking jets who averaged 30.4 yards per kick return. That was an NFL high that year and a very good 13.4 yards per punt return in four seasons with the jets. He caught 107 passes for 1,085 yards with five touchdowns during that span. Uh, so this to me, Um, you know, I'm happy to have Braxton back home, someone who covered this guy when he was a Miami hurricane. And I'm very interested to see what he can do in a Miami dolphins uniform. And I think that special teams role is the primary void that Miami, uh, the dolphins, I should say, need him to fill because the dolphins were an awful punt returning team last year. And, you know, if they really wanted to use Tyree kill for that repeatedly, they could, but they don't want to, they want to keep him fresh for offensive downs. So that's a role that Braxton Berrios can fill. And I think can thrive in for a team that needs a boost in kick and punt returns. And this is a homecoming for him. He didn't grow up in South Florida, but the four best years of his life were spent in Coral Gables. And he's going to be up the road now in Miami gardens, playing for the Miami dolphins. You look back on Braxton's final season with the Hurricanes, senior year, uh, he played extensively all four seasons. He played a lot as a true freshman with the Miami Hurricanes. Senior year started all 13 games for Miami, led the Hurricanes in receptions with 55, receiving yards with 679, and he led the team with nine receiving touchdowns that year. And what I remember most from that senior season for Berrios, who so badly wanted to beat Florida State that year before he moved on, before he ran out of eligibility, and he helped Miami do it. You know, everyone remembers, of course, our friend Malik Rozier to Daryl Langham, but you're not even positioned to make that play if not for two touchdowns that Braxton Berrios scored in that game. He helped Miami exercise those demons that year in 2017. Miami had not beaten Florida State since 2009, And he helped the Hurricanes get it done on that day. And he wanted that so badly before he moved on to the NFL. Uh, Per University of Miami's uh, website, their bio of Berrios when he played at Miami, uh, that year he was selected as a recipient of the ACC's Jim Tatum Award, which honors the conference's top scholar athlete. He was third team all ACC at wide receiver that year and all ACC honorable mention as a special teams player. And oh, here it is the academic Heisman. He was a finalist for the William Campbell Trophy. That's the academic Heisman, the Campbell Trophy. It was at the tip of my tongue. I just couldn't remember it. And he's going to be taking his talents to the Miami Dolphins. Now, we love to cover pro Canes when we can. We probably don't do it enough here on Locked on Canes, but since Braxton Berrios is someone who 
meant so much to me when I covered him at Miami. I wanted to give him a shout out that he's coming home to the Miami Dolphins. Now, you know, when, when I was uh, started covering the team, like game to game locker room stuff, I started doing that, you know, around uh, 2006 and 2007. 2006 was my last year as a student at Miami doing student radio, joined, you know, the, the media, the big bad media in 2007 been covering the team on and off uh, ever since uh, in the locker room and stuff like that. So, you know, I didn't cover in person the great players of the 80s and 90s. But when it comes to, you know, the great players of the last 15, 20 years, Braxton Berrios was one that was a joy to cover. Another guy who was a joy to cover that I distinctly remember just loving to gravitate to him after games uh, was Calais Campbell. He was another one that was one of my absolute favorites to cover. Uh, and he actually played on the same high school team in Colorado that a distant cousin of mine played on. And we were able to tap into that connection as well. So welcome back home, Braxton Berrios. And on the other side, folks, we're not done here on this bonus episode of Locked on Canes. We've been getting more and more of you guys' bold predictions for the 2023 season. I gave you a few of mine this morning, and we talked it through a little bit, but so many other great tweets have come in. I wanted to give you guys some shout-outs. You can tweet the show day or night at Locked on Canes. And if you follow us at Locked on Canes, we will follow you back. So we're going to have more bold predictions for the 2023 Miami football season when we come back. Guys, we got the tournament going on. It's been crazy today. Did you see what Furman? Furman! beat UVA a lot of brackets have already been but I don't know how many people had UVA going that deep but as far as your your perfect bracket a lot of perfect brackets were busted today with Furman pulling off the huge upset against Virginia magic like this happens and we track it and we win money on it with FanDuel and we're also we're past the midway point of the NBA season it's the perfect time to download FanDuel America's number one sports book because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1000 that's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win just download the FanDuel sportsbook app it's safe secure super easy to use then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained you know the line changed for the Miami Drake game since the last time I talked about it Miami minus one and a half. So if you were bullish on Miami winning the game, but you were a little bit concerned about two and a half, Miami minus one and a half at FanDuel. Uh, you know, I think that the Canes crowd out there, that's something you can take a long look at here. FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first and second listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Make sure you smash that thumbs up, smash that like button if you're watching us on YouTube, and subscribe to our channel, my friends. So let me see. For those watching right now on YouTube, I'm even going to share my screen. How about that? I'm going to read all these tweets out loud so you guys can hear them listening to the audio version. But, you know, I, I tweeted out this morning, do you have any bold predictions for Canes football in 2023? Now, some people thought I was strictly talking about win-loss record. It could be anything, right? Thousand-yard rushers, thousand-yard receivers, standout players, you know, individual game victories. It doesn't have to be a, a record, Okay. And we got a lot of bold predictions. I did talk a little bit about this one on the morning episode. Our guy, uh, John Nee Darms, who is a man after my own heart because he's both a Miami Hurricanes fan and an Inter Milan fan. So we share a lot of, lot of allegiances. He says, we will have two 1,000-yard rushers this year. Now, remember, Miami hasn't had a 1,000-yard rusher since Mark Walton back in 2016. It's been a hot second. So if you're telling me there's going to be two this year, uh, I'm guessing you're very bullish on Trevante Citizen coming off the ACL. Knock on wood, he's going to be okay. I know people are concerned about Citizen's recovery. Uh, there's not a whole lot of information out there because he's a college athlete and they keep medical privacy. They keep this stuff close to the vest. I do go back to what Mario Cristobal said March 4th after the first day of spring practice. He did say, he expects everyone who's currently injured and banged up, 
he thinks they're all going to be ready to go. Obviously, that excludes if anyone else you know suffers new injuries, then all bets are off. But as far as the guys who are currently dealing with injuries, he expects everyone to be ready to go by the start of the 2023 season. So when he says everyone, I assume he includes Trevante Citizen in that. So maybe Trevante Citizen. I made the bold prediction earlier today, if he stays healthy, I think Don Chaney can be Miami's leading rusher this year. He's that good, and we forget because we haven't seen it in like three years how good Don Chaney is. This is a complete back. So is Citizen when healthy. Henry Parrish is also, you know, a threat. Could end up with like a 1,000 all-purpose yards combining the receiving totals and the rushing totals. And then the young guys are X factors. Mark Fletcher looks big enough and powerful enough to contribute as a true freshman. Chris Johnson, I'm not so sure. He's a little bit smaller, but that's part of his magic. He's smaller, but he's extremely fast, and he's a track star. So listen, maybe Mr. Darms, uh, it's obviously wishful thinking to think about having 2,000-yard rushers, let alone one. But, you know, Miami's got some talent in their backfield. That talent just needs to be realized consistently on the field this year. See what else we got. Uh, we got this one. Alan Para says Jakari Brown will lead us to a bowl win. Now, I did even say underneath that's bold, but then someone made a good point in a follow up. I think it was on a YouTube comment. They made a follow up to that. That you know what? That's not that crazy because Miami's bowl eligible. Let's just paint the picture. Miami's bowl eligible at the end of the year, and then maybe Tyler Van Dyke had such a great season. He wants to get ready for the NFL draft. And as a lot of players do these days, maybe he opts out of the bowl game. It happens a lot around the country. Jakari Brown starts the bowl game and leads Miami to a bowl victory. So that's a scenario where even if Jakari Brown may not start or play much at all this regular season because it's TVD's job, uh, even if Jakari doesn't really play much in the regular season, he could end up being the bowl game starter if that scenario plays out with Tyler Van Dyke. So uh, that's actually a pretty interesting prediction. Wow. We get a loaded one here from Marla. Kane's football. She gave me like 10 in one. It was at nine predictions. All these bullet points. Kane's football in 2023 will be victorious over Clemson finally. See a 1,000-yard running back. Find Tyler Van Dyke returning to 2021 form. Yes, yes, and yes. I could see that with Tyler Van Dyke, by the way, because um, he's got an offense now that's better suited to his talents, right? It's not exactly the same as the Rhett Lashley offense, but it's a lot closer to the Lashley offense that Van Dyke was really good in than whatever that Josh Gaddis offense was last year. I don't even really know what that was. We're still trying to figure that out. But this is definitely an offense, and I think it's really cool that now, again, Miami has a – quarterbacks coach and an offensive coordinator who are the same person it's just going to make things more simple there's going to be more synergy there uh, with Shannon Dawson filling both of those roles there's not going to be any sort of a disconnect between the OC and the quarterbacks coach the way that there was last year so I can I can totally see Van Dyke returning to 2021 form he's also got to get some help though because remember in 2021 Van Dyke had Charleston Rambo and Mike Harley having incredible years, especially Rambo, who set Miami single season records that year. Uh, you need receivers to step up as well. I think Colby Young is going to be one of those guys. One of my bold predictions today for next year is, and I'll go on record with this and again, and I'll say it louder for those in the back. Colby Young is going to eclipse 1,000 yards receiving this year. You could see that for a couple of games. The chemistry he had with Tyler Van Dyke and then Van Dyke got injured, and, you know, the whole situation, unfortunately, Miami's offense was starting to find its footing a little bit, then they completely lost it. But Colby Young, for a couple games, had really good chemistry with Van Dyke. I think Colby Young is going to be a 1,000-yard receiver this year. Um, <laughs> I like this, this part of it, tackle. Miami will tackle more often than not, okay? Uh, they will be called for fewer total pass interferences than opponents uh i know marla as i also feel that miami gets hard done by referees a lot uh finish eight and four okay and be victorious in a bowl game finally so a lot of good predictions there michael cansdale says i think if we can stay healthy at quarterback offensive line and running back nine and three is a possibility Woo! 
tell you guys, I don't even like to think about records. I don't. It's too soon for me, and I got burned too badly last year. He says, I feel our defense is going to be great this year, and if our offense can match their intensity, 9-3 and three or better can be a reality. You said it. I hope you're right. Uh, T-Land says, I'm just hoping for blocking and tackling. <laughs> Not that bold, but you know what? If you watch Miami last year where they couldn't block or tackle, Maybe that is kind of bold because he sees them hopefully improving big time in two important areas. D well says eight and four or seven and five. Uh, we, the off season national champions season rolls around and the whistle gets blown. Our season ends. The standard remains optimistic with no expectations. Uh, I'm not sure if I completely understand what you're trying to say there, but uh, you know, Miami, uh, are we off season champions? We had a good, recruiting period we got burned by a couple of recruits uh decent transfer portal but i think florida state are the transfer portal off-season champions so i don't know i don't even know if we're off-season champions but you know there's been some stuff in spring that's been encouraging um wow bert says points per game will be circa 30 so if miami can go from 19.4 points per game against power five well not even power five against f See uh, FBS my just against FBS teams last year Miami scored 19.4 points per game if you just exclude Bethune Cookman from it that was embarrassing last year the offense I'm still embarrassed by it so yeah if Miami can go from 19.4 to around 40 going to be winning a lot more games next year uh Nathan Elias says Jaleel Skinner will be a major impact in the passing game leader on the team for receptions and yards. Okay. You know what? That's not that crazy because Miami's leading receiver last year was a tight end, right? Mallory leading receiver last year. So, you know, uh, obviously it's going to be a different offense this year, but I, and, and Jaleel Skinner is versatile enough. He can line up in a number of different spots. So I like that one. It's bold, but it's not crazy. Uh, Lawrence Mincy says, my bold prediction is uh, one game at a time. Momentum will be a factor this season. Can't predict momentum. Uh, I would also, you know what? I'm going to say I would also like to take it one game at a time, but I don't have to, right? Mario Cristobal does. The players do. I don't have to take it one game at a time. I can take it 12 games at a time if I want to. Uh, Mike says, nope, as in no predictions. I learned my lesson last year. Uh, that's why I'm not making win-loss predictions, Mike. Greatness inspires greatness, says we will have a better record than last year. That is all. So if Miami goes minimum six and six, they've got a better record than last year. Okay. Uh, Creamy Italian says our only loss will be Clemson. Ooh, I like that one. So he's got Miami beating Florida State, beating Texas A&M, beating North Carolina, but only losing to Clemson. Uh, that'd be one hell of a season, man. If they can get through 11 and one, they can get through 11 and one. Like you're talking about uh, being in the ACC championship game, possibly matching up against Clemson for a second time in that scenario. And, you know, being in the being on the short list for college football playoff. I think that's a little ambitious, but I like it. Uh, Tippett says uh, eight and four with a bull win. I think that's reasonable. Uh, our guy, Danny Boy Kane, says nine and three in 23. Your mouth to God's ears, DBC. Coach Chewy says, here's a bold prediction for you. Ruben Bain, eight sacks this season. And you heard said something similar. Bain will have eight and a half sacks as a freshman. Now that would be, listen, honestly, as a true freshman, I would be happy if Bain had, you know, four or five sacks. Like I'd be thrilled with that. If you're talking about eight sacks for him at 18 years old, first year of eligibility, that would be, that would be a monster season. Uh, but you know what? He looks the part, 270 pounds, been looking good so far in spring practice. Very, very minimal contact. The pads have only been on for one day, but he looks good so far. And yeah, I watched Ruben Bain at Miami Central breaking about every sack record you can break at the high school level. So, hey, listen, man, we got someone saying eight sacks, someone saying eight and a half. I'll take it. Uh, Paul Erickson said three offensive linemen will be all ACC. Miami's got some talented ones from Matt Lee, Javion Cohen. I could see those guys all ACC. Jalen Rivers, I could see him all ACC. I'm big on Big Coop, Bedez Cooper, Francis Maui Goa. You know, I, I said it this morning, Miami might have five. If, if you count first team, second team, and third team, Miami could have like five guys make that list. Now, that's probably a little too ambitious on my part. Miami Media Associates says, 
Tyler Van Dyke has over 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns this year, at, uh, breaking Bernie's single season record for passing and Steve Walsh's touchdown record. So he's got TVD out there breaking Kozar and Walsh records. I'm here for it. Polk Kane. Now we're getting crazy. <laughs> now now we're drinking the crazy juice and taking the crazy pills national champs he says but he did add an lol at the end so uh, maybe he's not serious and then robert hutchinson says we will win nine games and be in a good bowl i would love that and i would take a bowl win at the end of that so you guys are awesome you can always tweet us at locked on canes and if you follow us at locked on canes we will follow you back we'll talk to you next time on another episode of locked on canes we will talk more hoops tomorrow morning because yeah the basketball team madness tomorrow i'm nervous i'm excited i'm anxious i can't wait to see if we see norchad omir play or not and how good he looks he dunked today in uh shoot around or practice whatever that was today he did uh, dunk today so it looks like he's doing better so we'll talk to you guys again next time on another episode of locked on canes part of the awesome locked on podcast network your team every day